everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. As with football in the rearview mirror, or at least the NFL football season, we head back to the PGA Tour. Jim, we're here! We get to dream of sunny vacations. Uh, actually, just sun in general seems nice right now. And we get to look at, you know, some fun golfers. And what can be better than that? A little release from our very cold, uh, very cold settings that we have this time of year. I can pretend that I'm out at Pebble Beach. Or I can pretend I was in Phoenix last week. And I will take whatever I can get to release me from this weather that is January and February. So I'm very much looking forward to talking PGA with you again. I am so pumped to be back. Get back in the mix. Make some money. Let's begin. You start with one of the most expensive players on the board this week over at Pebble Beach. It's Dustin Johnson. He's priced at over $12,000. Why is he your top guy on the board? Yeah, Dustin Johnson isn't technically a course fit for Pebble Beach because it's not. It's a pretty short course. So you don't have to be long like DJ in order to win here, but... He has shown that has not mattered in the past because he has been amazing at Pebble Beach. He got a couple of wins here all the way back in the day. He was also third in 2017. He was second in 2018. So Pebble Beach is a, a, a course and a format he knows really well. And I think that helps make up for the lack of accuracy off the tee for DJ. And he's been to two events since he had knee surgery back in September. And I was kind of nervous about diving in on DJ just because I, you know, I, I don't want to use a guy who's coming off an injury, may have had a long layoff, but he looked awesome in those. He was seventh at the Tournament of Champions. He was also second at the Saudi International this past week. So it seems to me like Dustin Johnson is fully over that knee injury over the past 50 rounds per Fantasy National. He is 16th in approach. He is also a tremendous putter on Poa Greens, which is what we had this weekend. So I do still have some concerns around DJ because he is so shortly removed from that knee surgery, but he's looked awesome since coming back. His win odds are plus 550 at Patty Power, which are super short, easily the top guy in this field. So for DFS, I kind of think it means we should dive into Dustin Johnson, even if there are some lingering concerns around the health of that knee. All right, the knee is certainly an issue. The putting is not right now for Dustin Johnson. He likes Pebble Beach. He knows Pebble Beach. and He's someone that needs to be in your lineups at Pebble Beach. This week, let's move on. We'll stay at someone that is pretty expensive this week, and it's Paul Casey, Mr. Solidarity himself. How's Casey been doing thus far this season? Yeah, he's looked really good, and I think that he fits well with what I want to do for this weekend because if you look at the odds on Patty Power, you really have three guys who are kind of in a tier of their own. You got Dustin Johnson, Patrick Cantley, who we also love here on the Hurry Up, and then Paul Casey. Paul Casey is the cheapest guy in that tier, and in general, I want to try to get two of those three studs into most of my lineups. I love Patrick Cantlay, too, so I'm going to use him. But I'll also take the savings with Paul Casey, who fits this course really well. He ranks sixth in good drive rate over the past 50 rounds, according to Fantasy National. He is also fifth in approach, so really good ball striking numbers. The short game, not quite as good, but we've seen him still do well at this course in the past. Despite that, he was runner-up in last year's Pebble Beach Pro-Am. He was 21st at the U.S. Open, which took place at Pebble Beach. So a bit diff different format it was the U.S. Open. Didn't include the two other courses, but seeing Casey perform well there, I think does boost his stock. So to me, I want to get two of those studs in most lineups. I am okay with all three studs, but Paul Casey at 11-7 definitely deserves to be in that rotation. Paul Casey knows Pebble Beach extremely well, which makes him a viable player here on FanDuel. 11,700 uh, is certainly an expensive number, but Casey has played uh, well enough thus far this season, and of course at Pebble Beach, as I mentioned, to get him in there here at this price tag. Let's get a little bit cheaper. Let's go to this mid-tier here, Jim. We'll go with Adam Hadwin for the first time this season. He's priced just under $10,000. Why do you think Hadwin's in line for a big week? Well, he's got the new dad narrative on his side. That's always a plus. Uh, he made his first event back after becoming a father last week, and which is kind of okay, but when you look at Pebble Beach, it is a course in a format, if you look at all three courses, that fit his style really well because he's not super long off the tee, but he is third in good drive rate the past 50 rounds. He is also 15th in approach, and if you look back at last year in this format with all three courses, he did finish 18th in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am, so I think that that really does boost the stock of Adam Hadwin, and he doesn't really fit that well if you're going with both Dustin Johnson and Patrick Cantlay or Paul Casey, but there is also some value in going balanced. You're dropping down to guys like Matthew Fitzpatrick or Victor Hovland, and I will be doing that in some of my tournament lineups for this weekend. When I do that, it gives me a little more leeway to target guys like Adam Hadwin in this middle tier. A little bit pricey for the top-heavy builds, but if we're going to go a bit more balanced, Hadwin off of uh, becoming a father, the new dad narrative in full effect this weekend. 
Let's buy in. New dad is Adam Hadwin. He's going to play well for his new child. He's excited. He's ready to be back. He's going to destroy it over at Pebble Beach this weekend. Let's buy in the new dad, Adam Hadwin. Staying in the middle tier, Jim, that brings us to Vaughn Taylor, one of the cooler names on the tour, $9,400, one of the cooler guys on the tour. Other than the cool name theory, why do you like Vaughn Taylor? Well, that was my main point of appeal, so I guess I don't know what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the segment. But hey, I guess there are a couple of other things with Vaughn Taylor. The problem is he's coming off a missed cut, and I had a lot of Vaughn Taylor last week, so there's still some bad feelings here. But even with that being the case, I'm still in, which should tell you how well Vaughn Taylor matches up with this course, especially when he's in the mid-9,000 range, which is not my favorite tier for this weekend. And again, last week I wasn't on Taylor, but that was my fault. Uh, that was more of a distance course. This one is not, and that fits Vaughn Taylor pretty well because he is 20th in good drive rate and 24th in approach over the past 50 rounds. So this should be a better course for him, and he's still $9,400. Now, Taylor has lost strokes in approach in back-to-back -back events, so he's not necessarily going to be a guy I load up on at all times. But Again, I don't like this tier that much. I've got to use someone here. I think that Von Taylor is my favorite guy in the mid-9,000 range. Coming off that missed cut, he's a pretty consistent guy. Hadn't missed a cut for a long time before that. And I like to target consistent golfers coming off a cut, hoping that they uh, see reduced ownership as a result. And Von Taylor fits that narrative to a T. A lot of narratives here this week with Adam Hadwin and Von Taylor. Uh, we hope you can fit them both in your lineups. $9,400, $99 for Hadwin. It's tough to spend up. We're going to save a little money. We'll tell you how in just a moment. Let's move on to our values here, and that brings us to some new players uh, coming into our lineups here this season, Jim. And it starts with Adam Long. He's priced at $8,800. Uh, Jim, who's Adam Long? Yeah, he's, a, he's, not, he's not one of our staples here. There's no Jason Kokrak, so I was kind of lost. But what about Adam Long? And the reason that I decided to go with Adam Long is his stats profile's pretty good. If you look at his recent form, you know, look at him back in January, he was in a pretty big rut, which is weird to me because Adam Long in general is a really good approach player. So I was a little bit worried there. But at the Waste Management Phoenix Open this past week, he gained 4.9 strokes in approach, which helped him to an eighth place finish. And when you see a guy who has a long track record of being good on his second and third shots rebound like that, it nullifies my concerns around what was happening with him earlier in January. So we're back in on Adam Long here. He is 12th in the approach over the past 50 rounds. He's also 22nd in good drive rate. And over a very small sample, he has been good on Poa Greens. I wouldn't put a lot of stock into that given that it is a small sample, but it doesn't hurt to be good there for sure. He is $8,800. Seems to have some solid upside. So... I'll definitely take it. Adam Long, I could see him becoming a staple on this program just because his approach numbers are so good, and that's kind of all you can ask for in a guy who's just $8,800. Being solid, becoming a staple for us, that's exactly what we need at $8,800, a price that's going to be very forgiving. If he can hit some putts and make some shots, Adam Long in line to do exactly what we need him to do this week. One final player to get to, Jim, and it's also somebody new for us to talk about. It's Cameron Tringali, who's $8,500 this week over at Pebble Beach. What do you know about Tringali? Yeah, he actually fits the Vaughn Taylor model. He is a consistent golfer coming off a missed cut, and I think that when you look at the guys below $9,000, it's really hard not to like Tringali here, $8,500. Now, missed cut last week could be a concern if you want to buy into a super short sample, but it was largely fueled by bad putting because he actually gained 1.3 strokes in approach out in Phoenix. So I don't care about that. It, it makes sense because Tringali is a statistical stud across the board. That missed cut for Tringali was his first missed cut since all the way back in August. And again, we want to target consistent guys coming off a missed cut and Tringali does seem to fit that. Statistically, he fits everything that I want. He has a good, good drive rate. He's good in his approach play. Also saw it around the green and on the green. So I have no concerns around Cameron Tringali. If you want to go with Paul Casey and Dustin Johnson or go with Patrick Cantlay, you got to find guys below 9000 And Tringali is actually a pretty good chunk beneath $9,000 here, $8,500. So I think that after I decide which two studs I want, Tringali is the next guy I'll turn to. So I know how much flexibility I have left, left of my other three roster slots. Cameron Tringali is super flexible, and that flexibility is what allows us to get some of these bigger price players into the lineups. Adam, Adam Hadwin, Dustin Johnson, Paul Casey, they're all in there for Jim. They should be in there for you. But how do you get them all in? Players like Cameron Tringale. All right, taking a break. When we come back, Davis Maddock will join us to go over his best bets from the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Jim Sonis, we appreciate the time. Thank you, Greg, as always. Looking forward to hearing what Davis has to say, and I'll talk to you again soon. All right, there you have it. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. We'll take a break. We'll be back with Davis Maddock in just a few moments right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.
Back here on the FanDuel Hurry Up, I'm now joined by Davis Maddock of DailyRoto.com, who's taking a look at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am from a gambling perspective. What's happening, Davis? Uh, not much. You know, excited to start uh, gambling on golf again with you. You know, it was, uh, it was a fun, fun year last year, and I think we can get even better results this year. Oh, completely true, completely true. Hopefully, we'll win. And both you and Jim, you guys are in on Dustin Johnson this week, one of the highest-priced players on FanDuel, 7-1 to one, uh, at the books. Why do you like Dustin Johnson this week? Dustin Johnson owns Pebble Beach. He has won at this course twice. He consistently places inside the top five and the top 10 here. Pretty much has the perfect game for the actual Pebble Beach, cor actual Pebble Beach course. And then the Monterey courses and Spyglass courses that they play are super easy. And obviously, Dustin Johnson, with his amazing TD Green game, is just going to dominate on easy golf courses. And, you know, this is also a pretty weak field event. So Dustin Johnson at 7-1, to one, uh, our, our friends over at Data Golf actually think he is underpriced in the betting markets. All right, underpriced at 7-1, to and like you said, Dustin Johnson owns Pebble Beach. You heard that from Jim a few moments ago. As long as the putter's working, Dustin Johnson, a fine selection. One of the top players, of course, at this tournament and in the world. DJ, 7-1, to lock it in. Up next for us, Victor Hovland. He's 33-1 to this week at Pebble Beach. He's played well, really had a breakout season last year. Why do you think he's going to get this season off to a nice start? So Hovland is probably, he's probably going to be our new, you know, Byung Honey and Patrick Cantlay. <laughs> We're probably going to have Hovland on this show more weeks than not. He right now, uh, through his eight measured rounds on the PGA Tour this year, no one has gained more strokes striking the ball than he has. So that means, you know, off the tee and with his long irons. And at this golf course, so much of your scoring is going to come from, you know, what you're able to do with your irons and your wedges. So Hovland, I think a little bit underpriced here. And also I think that he's a guy who's very likely to win on the PGA Tour this year, so I want to take a lot of stabs at him winning over the course of the season. All right, we'll start that stab here at Pebble Beach, 33-1, to as we said, for Victor Hovland. Great season last year. Let's see what he does to start off this year. Up next, we just talked about him. It's Vaughn Taylor, and Vaughn Taylor's got a lot working for him. He's 85-1, to but he's a previous winner at Pebble Beach, which means these odds are way too low. Yeah, Vaughn Taylor, previous winner at this golf course. And you'll actually notice something pretty interesting when you go to look at the stats that really matter here. You'll find that, you know, a lot of young guys who drive the ball really far do well here. But also you'll find the old men, you know, like Vaughn Taylor, Jerry Kelly, Steve Stricker. Those guys also project really well here because so many of your shots are going to be coming from within 100 yards. And if you're able to get the ball, you know, very close to the hole, shooting it from 100 yards, you're going to be able to make a ton of birdies. And Vaughn Taylor is, you know, one of the best on tour from inside that range. He's so good with his wedges. So, you know, Von Taylor, 85 to one. Again, our, our friends over at Daily Roto and Data Golf, they have him is, you know, 10 points underpriced at 85 to one. 85 to one, just just too underpriced. DailyRoto.com. Uh, Data Golf, say it as well. You can just tell it. Jim likes him. Davis likes him. That's enough for me. I'm in on Von Taylor this week. Let's keep it going and let's go to one of your guys, Matty Jones, 175 to 1. I feel like he was a 200 to 1 guy last year, so he's creeping up. Creeping up a little bit. And uh, what you're seeing there with the 175 to 1 is course history is priced in. Matt Jones has uh, made the cut at Pebble Beach eight out of the last 10 years. Uh, and he's, he's just always been very good at this course. I also think that he is a really good uh, top 10 bet as well. You know, you know, only one guy can win a golf tournament, but more guys can kind of creep inside that top 10, top 20 range. So I like Matt Jones in those markets as well. But yeah, you know, Data Golf again has him as like a 125 to 1 guy. So getting those extra 50 50 cents of value we think is uh, is pretty massive with him. Matt Jones, one of our guys, has had some success here at Pebble Beach. He's made the cut a bunch of times. Putting him online to at least make some noise this weekend and is worth sprinkling a little bit on him here over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Up next, he's 70-1. to 1. He's got better rods than Matt Jones, but maybe hasn't had the success at Pebble Beach that Jones has. It's Tom Hoagie. He's 70-1. to 1. What do you think about him? So Tom Hoagie is, he's one of those guys who was, you know, a good PGA Tour golfer, you know, made enough cuts, was did well enough to keep his PGA Tour card. But over the last year, he really has turned into a brand new golfer and is a top five ball striker on the tour this year, you know, through the first four or five events. And, uh, you know, also, I got to say, he is my buddy. He came on my podcast and, and talked a lot about golfing. And one of the things he said was there are certain courses where he feels more comfortable on than not. And Pebble Beach is one of those courses where, for 
whatever reason, when he steps out on those tee boxes, he's just ready to go low. It's a course that he feels good on. So it's 70 to one. We are definitely taking stabs at Tom Ogie. Yeah, why not? He's a friend of the program here, Davis. So you got to take a shot at him every week. You got to just put something on him because when he wins, you want to win too. Tom Ogie, 70 to one. Let's get it done. One final name to get to is Wyndham Clark, also 175 to one, much like Matt Jones. Uh, why do we like Wyndham Clark? So I have a suspicion that Wyndham Clark is going to be one of those guys who we look at at the end of the year and in betting markets, he's going to be 75 to one, 80 to one, 90 to one. I think that he is going to elevate his game to the, you know, just basically the next status of golfer. He's played some good golf already this year. He's one of the longest guys off of uh, the tee box, you know, really in all of golf. And that's always a huge advantage. You know, there's going to be some holes at Pebble Beach where his first shot is going to leave him with a, a 35 yard second shot to the green on some of these par fours. So I, I just think he is underpriced and a guy who's going to have a really good season on the tour. All right, Wyndham Clark, someone that we're going to take a stab on early and continue going through this season, and we'll see how much he rises. We'll see how much he wins, and more importantly for us, how much money he makes us. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry. I want to thank my guests, Jim Sonis and Davis Maddock, both fantastic. Both got me ready, pumped, and amped for Pebble Beaches Pro and this weekend. Davis, I appreciate the time, man. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, everyone, you know, let's uh, let's root on Tom Hoagie and get him that W. Absolutely. I'm all in on Tom Hoagie. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the tournament. And we'll see you next time right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.